is our money. The onset of the coronavirus pandemic is forcing institutions around the world to rethink about one particularly germy service, cold hard cash. This is gonna be hard to hear, but according to multiple studies, microorganisms found living on the surface of cash and even credit cards range from mouth and vaginal bacteria to flu-like viruses. But what if you can make your daily purchases without touching a thing? Welcome to Sweden, where thousands of people are inserting tiny microchips under their skin so that they no longer have to carry cash, IDs, gym passes, and key cards to get into work. I have two microchip implants, one on the right and one on the left. I got the micro implants because I wanted to be part of the future. I don't need keys, so I'm able to actually open the doors um, with my hands. These tiny chips are about the size of a grain of rice, and they're implanted into the back of the hand with a syringe. And so far, about 3,000 Swedes have gotten them implemented. So in Sweden, you can actually use it to put your train tickets inside. You can actually use it with Scandinavia's biggest gym chain, so you don't actually need to show your membership card. I use it personally as a business card, so you can actually put your phone on my hand and then my LinkedIn pops up. So who's behind this technology? This is Hans Sepien Showblood, and he's the CEO and co-founder of Disruptive Subdermals. They're one of the leading companies when it comes to developing microchip technologies. I first encountered chip implants for humans almost 10 years ago. Uh, I felt that this is a very interesting technology that we could potentially do some awesome things with. So I bought a bunch online, got together a bunch of friends, and we had our first chip implant party. The number one reason for getting an implant is simply convenience. Uh, it allows you to eliminate some of the clutter in your life. Implants can also be used for making payments. For example, here at Epicenter in Stockholm, we use our implants in different vending machines, buying snacks and candy and juices whenever we feel like it. Microchips may sound too futuristic for you, but Sweden is expected to be the world's first cashless economy by March of 2023. But now, microchips could be used for more than just convenience. They have the potential to change healthcare and the way governments are handling the coronavirus crisis. I am convinced that smart implants will provide a marvelous value to people who suffer from different health conditions and need to be able to log their vital parameters on a regular basis. It could be body temperature, pulse, blood pressure. And imagine if you could just do that by swiping yourself with a smartphone at any time. For example, the implants that we designed allow people to measure their body temperature. It has some very interesting applications to see how fever is spreading in the population. And I think that we will really need those tools to not least understand the ongoing pandemic, but in particular to be able to spot future pandemics uh, at an early stage. But how safe is your data in a body chip? So I'm not particularly concerned about the hacking dimension of implants because ultimately the processing of data doesn't happen in the implant. It's simply a sensor platform. All the processing happens in the smartphone. That's where the data is uh, analyzed and where it's packaged and presented. Cybertech experts still cite potential issues with data handling. If data isn't secure, others can access your info. And once it's out there, it's hard to get back. And in some cases, users could even be giving their data away without even realizing it in the terms and conditions that they sign on their smartphones. But with the way technology is headed, we could see a future where microchip implanting becomes the norm. I believe that I'm gonna be able to use my microchips with, to do payments in the future, identification, tickets. In Sweden, every shop, in every kiosk, in public transport, there are always these touch terminals where people either touch their phone or their wallet with a credit card inside. So this means that the infrastructure for making payments also with an implant are already there. The question is, could this Black Mirror type of technology be implemented in other countries? 
Han's ultimate vision is to take health microchips to developing countries where healthcare systems are less developed, so that people in remote areas with limited access to hospital facilities can just send their health information to doctors around the world to receive diagnosis. But until that technology is fully developed, would you be willing to get a microchip?